One of the biggest conundrums of this season has been whether to start Najee Harris or Jalen Warren for the Steelers. And this week, we're actually going to say start them both. Ooh. And this has been a viable option at some points this season. There have been weeks where Najee has really done well. Last week, actually, Najee had a fairly good week. There have been weeks that Jalen Warren broken off big plays. The week before last, he did exactly that. It was a good week to start him. There have also been weeks where they've both produced. We expect that one of those weeks is going to happen again because they're playing the Arizona Cardinals. Mm. When you're looking at the last four games for these guys, Jalen Warren, 14 points, 19 points, 23 points against Cleveland, and seven points. And then Najee, 15 points, 18 points, four points, and 15 points. So when you're looking at the production, I mean, they've, they've produced, they both produced in multiple of the last four games. They've both produced, and now they're playing a rushing defense that has not been good this year against running backs and has given up a lot of fantasy points, the second most, again, to running back this year. And when you're looking at some of the performances against the Arizona Cardinals, Kyron Williams, 38 points. What a performance by Kyron Williams. Gus Edwards, 29. Devin Singletary, 19. Bijan, 17. Royce Freeman, who? 13. <laughs> Kenneth Walker, 13. Jerome Ford, 12. Nine running backs have scored nine and a half or more points against the Cardinals in the last six weeks. And you could say nine and a half points. That's wow. not that many points. Have you seen running back production this year? <laughs> It's quite We'll bad. take everything we can get. You take everything you can get. And we do think that there's going to be a lot to get from the production with these running backs this week. The Steelers are going to obviously be favored in this game against the Cardinals. So we're going to expect that they're going to probably beat them. They're four-point favorites, probably by a touchdown or a little bit, little bit less than that. But regardless, there's going to be some scoring in this game. And if I had to bet on whether that's going to be the running backs or whether that's going to be a receiver thrown to by Kenny Pickett, I'm going to guess the running backs. Yeah. Because, and honestly, I think the running backs would be better throwing their own passes to themselves and scoring than having Kenny Pickett throw them. I, I mean, he's just bad. He's just bad. Yeah. But I do expect I expect those running backs to have a big week against a pretty bad defense. Yeah, and one of the biggest reasons we're going to have this guy, I, I think you cannot overstate the significance of Matt Canada being fired. Um, the Steelers' ex-offensive coordinator at this point. I mean, I'm not even a Steelers fan. The Steelers beat the Colts every single year. I don't think the last time the Colts beat the Steelers was like 20 years ago. It, it's infuriating. And we have this up here because it belonged to one Respect. of our buddies, Nate Johnson. And Nate also did tell us this year that Kenny Pickett was going to take a big step forward and he was going to be really good. Very and, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... I could not have been happier for Steelers fans, for Steelers Nation, when Matt Canada got fired. Never wished for a man to get fired, but my gosh. That was one of the, the most was, historic moments of the NFL, in my opinion. Like, because <laughs> One of the most like about-time moments in, in NFL history, honestly. Um, it, it has been way too long since the Pittsburgh Steelers have even had more than 400 yards of offense in a game. <laughs> the first game without Matt Canada, they put up, guess what, over 400 yards. They looked like they were clicking on all cylinders, even though the <laughs> scoreboard at the end of the uh, at the end of the game Leaking. didn't show it. But um, it it was it was good. So and, and what I like here is you even saw it against poor defenses with Matt Canada as the OC against Tennessee and Green Bay in weeks nine and ten. Jalen Warren and uh, Najee Harris both scored over fifteen points in those games each. So that, that that's a good Matt thing. Matt Canada and Frank Reich are hanging out this week. They could be. Maybe <laughs> they'll like. They could be start coaching the XFL together, but uh, <laughs> that's about their next the, the step XFL. for both that of them. Is, that's so perfect. Jalen Waddle <laughs> is going to be our next guy here, and he's notably been one of the guys that we've wanted people to invest in early in the season. And then we said towards the end of the year, or I think last week, we said he's going to be a guy that you're going to want to trade away now that he's been producing a little bit, not super consistently, but he, you could get some value from him. Trade him away because he doesn't have very good playoff matchups once you get into your fantasy playoffs. And that still holds true, but guess what? We're still two weeks away from the fantasy playoffs, so if you still own Jalen Waddle you better make sure you start Jalen Waddle this week. They're playing the Washington Commanders. We could stop there. We could walk away from the video. We, we could stop talking about Jalen Waddle altogether and just say Washington Commanders. You'd be like, yeah, okay. Okay. But since you're asking for a little more analysis, I'll give it to you. I, I will, because I'm a nice guy. The last five games against the Commanders, A.J. Brown, 33 points. Tyler Lockett, 23. Devontae Smith, 22. Yeah, that's A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith in the, you know, same game. Darius Slayton, 18 points. CeeDee Lamb, 17. Brandon Cook, 17. Yeah, CeeDee Lamb and Brandon Cook's in the same game. And then DK Metcalf, 16 points. Yeah, Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf, same same game. So what so, I'm noticing here is that even though Tyreek Hill's going to produce against the Commanders... I, I think Jalen Waddle's going to have a pretty good day, too. What makes you think that? Just, you know, from all the same games. That, I don't that think you have enough have evidence to say that, though. 
but like, you know, AJ Brown and Devonta Smith, Ty Lockett and DK Metcalf, CeeDee Lamb and Brandon Cooks. You don't know ball. Is that enough for you? All right. Well, I, I hope it's <laughs> enough for you guys that are watching the video because I'm starting a Jalen Waddle literally everywhere possible in my fantasy leagues. Same here. And I'm also going to start Brock Purdy this week. I'm looking at the quarterback landscape now. And again, you have all of these quarterbacks getting hurt. You had Anthony Richardson go out earlier in the year. You've had Kirk Cousins go down. You've had all of these quarterbacks that you had drafted for your fantasy team and they have gone down. Brock Purdy has stood the test of time. He has been fairly good. He had 11 points last week, which was a down week for him. But again, you saw the two weeks before that, 23, 26 points. When you're surrounded Surrounded by the best weapons in the NFL, you are destined to get a lot of touchdowns, a lot of touchdowns, and he had three of those in each of the last two games before week 12, but the Philadelphia Eagles, and everybody talks about the Eagles defense, it is funny how we associate these defenses with these teams that actually like don't have that good a defense. The, the Eagles defense this year really hasn't been great. Like Their D-line, their, their, their front line is so good. So they are so good in the trenches, mm-hmm. but outside of that, I mean, very it's mediocre, very mediocre, mediocre secondary linebacks. I mean, it's just not good. It's not very good. And so they've given up the second highest points to quarterback this year in fantasy. That I mean, for a for a team that is considered a Super Bowl contender, that's a lot. It makes you wonder about the Eagles in, in the last four QBs against the Eagles this year. Josh Allen had forty points in PPR leagues. Sam Howell had thirty two. <laughs> Dak had 28. Dak's been on a tear recently, by the way. Yeah, he has. Patrick, da- Dak, by the way, sh- maybe, we talked about this, maybe should be creeping in the MVP conversation. He has been fabulous I recently. Know. I know if he, he can, If he keeps this up, he should be in it. Remember that dynasty conversation we had about uh, Daniel Jones and Dak Prescott? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. A whole video. Oh, on that. no. Yikes. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, 18 points. So, Again, you're seeing these quarterbacks consistently come out and put up good performances against the Philadelphia Eagles. You've seen it all year. And so Brock Purdy, a guy who's produced as a quarterback, won this year pretty consistently as a top 12 quarterback most weeks. There's going to be no exception. I mean, this, in fact, this is such a good matchup for Purdy. And I think with the quarterback landscape, people are starting Purdy anyways. But in case you're not, in case you do have the luxury of having two quarterbacks on your roster and you get to choose between two good quarterbacks, Brock Purdy is the one to go with, and I think he's the biggest QB star of the week. Well, Brock Purdy is a guy that you honestly, I mean, statistically should be going with every single week through 11 weeks so far. So this is not accounting for the Seattle game. Do you know what he ranks in points per game? Points per game? Probably fifth or sixth. Seventh. Seventh. Yeah. He, he, he's a top eight quarterback in points per game through week 11. He'll probably finish as a top 10 in points per game still yeah. after this down week against Seattle. But he has been very quietly consistent. And I know it's everyone's favorite thing to just knock on Brock Purdy because he happens to play on the best offense in the NFL. Because he's essentially a point guard. Because he's... A, yeah, he... I mean, point, you, po- listen, point guards score fantasy I, I just points. think it's funny that people like to discredit him when in, in fantasy, especially when he's doing this. Like, I don't care what your opinion is of whether he's good or bad or mediocre or whatever. The fact is he's scoring points. It's kind of the same thing with Justin Fields. Like, we, we, we're not a huge fan of him as an NFL quarterback, but my goodness. In fantasy? In fantasy, when he's at his best, he's at... He, yeah, I'll take the extra 100 yard rushing for <laughs> yeah. my fantasy team. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, Brock Purdy again this week. I would be starting him over pretty much any quarterback. Yeah, we're also going to be starting. I know it's disgusting. Tight ends. Talk about another. What position has been nice this year? Wide receiver, and that's really about it. Quarterback play has been down. Running backs have been down. Tight ends have been disgusting outside of TJ Hawkinson, who's like cream of the crop, best guy in football that you just want. I, I just could watch TJ Hawkinson all the time. Remember how reactionary we were when we said TJ Hawkinson was the tight end one and died? How reactionary that You're was. Too reactionary. We, we just get a lot of crap for Jameer Gibbs, though. That's all. We'll get respect for TJ Hawkinson. Bengals have allowed the second highest points given up to tight ends this season. Yeah, I'm down. Um, it's not saying much. Now, is that but... a lot of points? <laughs> I, I mean, compared to every no. other position in the NFL, no. It, it's not that many points. But it, it does matter when you know, you're looking at what tight end should I be starting. Because guess what? There's only two people in your league that have one of Travis Kelsey and TJ Hawkinson. And if they don't have one of those two guys, you're probably fricked. You're probably screwed because yeah, Dalton Kincaid's been all right of recent last couple games. He's kind of been down Sam Laporta since his big game early in the season has been the definition of inconsistent in fantasy. And Pat Fryermuth just decided to have a 120 yard game this week since Matt Canada has been gone. Dalton Schultz, inconsistent. Like, like it, there's I, the list goes on and on. But with Evan Ingram, at this point, it's just so matchup dependent because most people are spamming tight end on a week to week basis. Spam Evan, Evan Ingram this week. The matchups for tight ends: George Kittle, twenty three points; Pat Fryermuth, twenty one. 
Dalton Kincaid, 16. Dalton Schultz, 11. So Evan Ingram has a down game. The Jags offense has a down game. You're looking at a floor of 10 points. He's not going to be a guy that absolutely screws you in your chances of winning this week when you're trying to get a good seed in the playoffs or trying to make the playoffs at all. Roger Stevens is going to be the next guy on this list, and he's actually had a fairly good couple of games yeah. in, in the last three weeks. 22 points against Washington, 13 against Indy, which was surprising to say the least, and mm-hmm. 21 against the Giants this week. Now, you're going to say, yeah, those weren't very good defenses. You're right, but the defense he's playing this week, also not good. He's playing the coveted, the notorious Los Angeles Chargers, oh. who have a defensive-minded head coach, but suck Brilliant absolute young mind. dog poo-poo. At mm. defense, mm. it's real bad. Poo-poo. And you look at Ramondre Stevenson as the season has gone on. You know he started to really dip in the snaps he was getting. And Ezekiel Elliott was really starting to eat into some of that. And recently, you've yeah. seen him kind of get some of that back, and it's been kind of on the up and up for four straight games now. Yep. So we're really excited about that. And again, playing a Brandon Staley defense. Let's look at some running backs against a Brandon Staley defense in the last six games. 26 points from Jameer Gibbs, 17 from Montgomery, 16 from Pacheco, 13 from Darrington Evans. <laughs> That should end my argument. Yeah. 11 from Keaton Mitchell, 10 from AJ Dillon, 10 from Brees Hall. You know what I see there? A really nice floor. And you know what I love about Ramondre Stevenson on this stretch over the last four weeks, including the bye week? Yeah. The targets. Yep. Six, five, and five targets, and he's hauling in a majority of those like quite easily. And that's what you're looking for in, a, in, in such a bare time. I'm interested to see, like because he really hasn't been super good this year, and I don't think anybody would yeah. try to tell you that he has been good, yeah. but even in this year's, like, he is still a running back, too, right now. He's still a running back. He's still running back 19. Like, and he finished as that Dude. two years ago and was way better than he has been this year. You ready to get your mind blown? This is just how bad running back has been this year. Wait on me. Who do you think is the RB5 in, in PPR total points this year? Kyron Williams. He's in the NFC. Kyron well, Williams. Kyron Williams has been hurt, so well, no. That's why, oh, that's why I was... Kyron Williams would be the RB2 if he didn't get hurt. In the NFC? In the NFC, there's your hint. Rashad White? No, good guess, though. Brian Robinson. That's crazy, because he really did start off well, but he hasn't done anything. nothing, not, yeah. He just happens to get double-digit points because he gets pretty much all the volume there as a running it, it, back. It's That's just how bad body. it's been It's the warm year. body, although yeah. Damian Pierce yep. is the exception to that yeah. rule, apparently. He's Ramond- too bad. Yeah, Ramondre Stevenson is absolutely a guy who, since running back has been so bad this year, he has the upside and the chance to help you win your league and make a playoff push if he can really put things together because of those running backs that have produced as running back ones this year, Ramondre Stevenson is so much more talented than at least half of those True. because they're just, I mean, there's just so many no-names. True. It, it's unreal. The, the injuries and just the lack of production horrible um adam thielen's going to be our next guy here he's kind of been down the last month seven points 10 15 there you go and then one i mean he really did come back down to earth after he was like literally yeah. ridiculous yeah i know and that was an interesting note because when we were talking about adam thielen towards the end of that stretch we were like just so you know in the month of november and december his production actually ha- tends to go down um, compared to what he does at the start of the season. Yes. But that being said, the biggest news of this week is going to be Frank Wright getting fired after 11 games. He's probably out of the NFL. He literally said it today. This is probably the last time he'll ever do anything in the NFL. He'll retire for good. And uh, it's a bummer way to go out when you had such a promising uh, career with Bryce Young, a franchise quarterback that he never had in Indianapolis. He still can bring things together. Adam Thielen, really was not uh he he was not reaping the benefits of the offensive incompetency it started to be Jonathan Mingo which is funny to see it's hilarious i'm still optimistic about adam thielen for the rest of the season i think he's going to pick things up and you've seen this trend over the last couple of years where offenses specifically and their production and what what some of their players do after the firing of a head coach mid season they go on this run of like impressive production You've yeah. seen it with the Raiders this year. And Josh McDaniels, like, I'll give Josh McDaniels the upper hand at this point over Frank Reich as a head coach at this point in time, even though neither of them are head coaches. But, I, I mean, they're both pretty much on the same level. Really bad situations for both of them. But, like, Terrible Jacoby coaches. Myers has yeah. been doing well. Devontae Adams has been fine. Josh Jacobs has finally found his groove in that offense. Will finish as a top six running back at this rate. I think you're looking at the same thing for Adam Thielen. Is he going to be elite? Is he going to be the reason that you win your league? 
I don't know. I, I'm honestly not sure. But for this week specifically, playing the Bucks with the fourth highest points given up to wide receivers this season, guys, we just saw them do this with the Gardner Minshew led Colts this past week. 13 targets to Josh Downs and 13 targets to Michael Pittman. That is an insane amount of volume for two wide receivers on the same offense. Now you're really just looking at Adam Thielen. Now look at the wide receivers that have scored against the Bucs. Tank Dell, 29. Noah Brown, 27. Same team. Brandon Ayuk, 26. Gabe Davis, 23. Pittman, 20. Diggs, 16. You know, Gabe Davis and Diggs, same team. Huh. Khalil Shakir. Oh, yeah. That's three wide receivers on the same team that have all produced huh. uh, over 15 points in the same game. Nico Collins, 14. That's good. That's very, very good. And you know what I see? Not, not only are they on the same team, but that's Josh Allen, a ton of passing volume. That's Gardner Minshew, a ton of passing volume. And that's CJ Stroud, a ton of passing volume. Bryce Young has not been uh, super good this year, to put it nicely. He does have, he provides a lot of passing volume. True. They so I, I, I mean, there could be multiple receivers that benefit from this matchup this week. Isaiah Pacheco is going to be the last guy here. Isaiah Pacheco in his last three games, six points, 10 points, and then 25 points against the last game. Actually had a pretty good week. I mean, you're looking at how the Kansas City Chiefs have been using their running backs. I mean, Isaiah Pacheco has clearly established himself from start to finish as the running back there. It's been actually kind of surprising to me. It's been surprising to some other people, but Isaiah Pacheco yeah. really has cemented his role there. The Packers, who they are playing, are giving up the 11th highest points to running back, the seventh most yards, and the seventh most touchdowns. So. Isaiah Pacheco this week, probably going to be a must start for us. Definitely putting him in our flex spots. Running backs versus the Packers in the last three games. Uh, Jalen Warren, 19. Najee, uh, 18. Again, same game. You see that going back to the beginning of our video. It all comes full circle. David Montgomery, 15. Jameer Gibbs, 11. And also on the same team. So um, Isaiah Pacheco, definitely a guy that you should check out starting this week. And I think that... Um, I think that he's probably going to be a pretty solid start the rest of the yeah, season I mean, with the volume he's, he's getting, getting. All the opportunities. It's, the, all the, it's literally like the goal line touches, all plays total, completely dominating compared to Clyde edwards alaire who's the second running back there. Early downs, short yardage, all that jazz, man. Yeah. All right, do us a huge favor. Make sure you drop a like on this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 5,000 subscribers. Fantasy season is winding down, but we still would really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you guys, and we'll see you later.